18 years ago, I was a sophomore at Villanova University outside of Philadelphia. Now Valpo and Villanova have a lot of similarities. They're both beautiful campuses, great schools, and here we are in late March and they're still playing basketball, right? Go Valpo in the NIT Final Four, go Nova in the NCAA Final Four. But I digress. As a second semester sophomore at Villanova, I gotta be honest, I was completely and utterly miserable. I was, I was depressed, I was homesick, I had trouble fitting in, I didn't get into the organizations, into the clubs that I wanted to, and because of that, I was in a really dark place. And halfway through that second semester, somebody invited me to go on a retreat. Now, I had never been on a retreat before. I didn't know what to expect. All I knew is that it was gonna be a weekend away from Villanova, and I would have taken anything to get off campus for a couple days. So off I went with about 40 other students, and we got to the retreat center that Friday night, and one of the first things we did was we heard a talk from one of the retreat leaders. She was a senior at Villanova, and she talked about how difficult her entire college experience was for her. And I remember sitting on the ground in the middle of this room, and for the first time in two years, I felt normal again. I didn't feel so alone. And her talk gave me the confidence to open up and to share my story and my struggles with others on the retreat. And you know what I heard from them? That many of them were going through the exact same thing that I was going through. That weekend taught me a valuable lesson. And it may sound cliched, but it is so true. One is the loneliest number. Think of it like this. Imagine that this black line represents your life from today all the way out into the future. And this black line represents whatever normal is in your life. Now what happens when adversity strikes? Adversity might be homesickness as a college sophomore. It might be being bullied or picked on in school. Adversity might be getting laid off or fired from a job, going through a divorce or a ruined relationship. It might even be suffering a serious illness or injury or even addiction. Now what happens when adversity strikes? It is only natural when adversity strikes for, us, for it to send us into a downward spiral, for, us, for it to put us in a hole. Now, if you're like me, back at Villanova as a sophomore, you can make one of two choices. Unfortunately, if you let shame and you let embarrassment win, what does that mean? It means you keep it to yourself. You don't tell anybody. You don't want to seem like a loser, right? And when you keep it to yourself, you rely on something I call the weakness of one, right? And when you keep it to yourself out of shame or out of embarrassment, because you don't want to look like a loser to those around you, when you rely on the weakness of one, chances are you will get through whatever you're going through. But the bad news is, oftentimes, it takes you a long time to do so. The good news is, when adversity strikes, you have another choice. But that comes with overcoming any shame and any embarrassment that you're feeling. And that second choice is to harness the power of and, the power of others, the power of those around you. And there's two main benefits to harnessing this power of and. The first one is when you open up and you share your story and your struggles with others, you meet people who are going through exactly what you're going through. And there's a huge psychological boost that comes with knowing that you're not alone, knowing that you're normal. And this is not a new idea or a novel concept. Emile Durkheim was talking about this notion of social solidarity back in the late 1800s. A little more recently, Brene Brown gave an incredible TED Talk called The Power of Vulnerability. And in that talk, she talked about when you can open up and share your vulnerability, when you can share your weakness, when you can share your failures with others, that's what builds a connection between individuals. 
And let's face it, it's this connection, it's this sense of community that serves as a foundation of many major religions today. In Judaism, community is known as kahila. In Islam, it's known as Ummah or Amma. In certain Christian faiths, this is known as being part of the body of Christ, being in communion with one another. It's the understanding that the strength of the community is better than any one individual. So when you harness the power of and, you get that psychological boost. And here's the other benefit. When you can open up and share your story and your struggles with others, you not only meet people who are going through what you're going through, you meet people who have been through what you're going through. And from those people, you get to learn how they got themselves back on track so that you too can return to normal much quicker than if you keep it to yourself. Is it any wonder why organizations and corporations spend billions of dollars every year hiring outside consultants to help them overcome internal challenges or obstacles? Why try to figure it out yourself when you can work with somebody who's already been there and done that for another organization? Harnessing the power of and, sharing your story and your struggles with others always beats keeping it to yourself. This is true not only in your professional lives, not only in your personal or your spiritual lives, this is also true in your relationships. So many of you heard from my wife, Dr. Z, earlier tonight, talking about and not or. And Amanda and I have been married for almost 10 years. And she'll be the first to tell you that we've certainly had our ups, but we've also had our downs. In fact, a couple months shy of our first anniversary, we were in a really dark place. We were questioning not only our commitment to one another, but we were struggling with what the true definition of a dedicated relationship and marriage is supposed to look like. And it almost tore us apart. At that point, if you asked either one of us, I think both of us would have, been, would have said, we're not sure we're going to hit that one year mark. The challenge for us, what made things even worse is, we looked around and all of our other friends who were married seemed so happy. So what were we doing wrong? Why were we so bad at this marriage thing? We let shame and embarrassment win. We didn't open up, we didn't talk to others about this, we kept it to ourselves. Now the good news is we got through it. The bad news is it took us a long time to get there. Now, fast forward to a couple years ago. We had just moved out here to Valpo from Boston. Amanda had just begun her job here at Valpo as a psychology professor. I was embarking on a new career myself as a corporate sales trainer. I had to be on an airplane almost every week. We had just welcomed into our home our second son, and we were juggling a lot of change. And the problem was, as the pressure mounted, what do you think we did? We took it out on each other. Not good, right? Eventually, we got a chance to, to, to get away for a little vacation, just her and I. And we're sitting across the dinner table one night in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we realized almost at the exact same time that we didn't even like being around each other anymore. Boy, that's a scary realization. Needless to say, we haven't been back to Scottsdale ever since, right? No offense to Scottsdale, Arizona. But this time, we had something going for us. This time, we didn't keep it to ourselves. We opened up and we shared our story and our struggles with anybody who would listen, right? Certain family members, friends. We got a great counselor. And you know what we heard from many of those people? That this was normal. This was normal for a relationship that was juggling so much change. And from some of those same people, we heard about times in their own relationships where they struggled and what they did to get back on track. So this time, we got our relationship and our family back on track much quicker than that first go around. Harnessing the power of and, sharing your story and your struggles with others, always beats keeping it to yourself. So I'll leave you with one last thought. One of my favorite TV shows of all time is a show called The West Wing. This was a TV series about a fictional president and his staffers. And there was an episode in the second season where Josh Lyman, one of the president's staffers, was going through a really hard time. 
And at the end of an episode, he's sitting on a couch in the lobby of the White House, and he's getting ready to get, uh, to get a ride home. And his boss, Leo McGarry, comes and takes a, uh, a seat next to him. And Leo tells Josh the following story. He says, a guy's walking down the street and he falls in a hole. And he can't get out of this hole. So he screams out for help. Help me, help me, I'm stuck in this hole, I'm stuck in this hole. Well, the first person that walked by was a priest. What does the priest do? He takes out a piece of paper, writes a prayer on it, drops it in the hole and goes on his way. The second person that walked by was a doctor. The doctor writes a prescription on a piece of paper, drops it in the hole and goes on his way. The third person that walked by was a friend. And what does the friend do? The friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, what are you doing now? We're both stuck in this hole. And the friend says, yeah, but I've been here before and I know the way out. It's easy to think that the hero of that story is the friend who jumped in the hole. And don't get me wrong, what he did was admirable. But that's what friends do. Friends want to help other friends. People want to help other people. But you have to give them the chance. To me, the hero of that story is the guy who jumped in the hole in the first place. I'm sorry, is the guy who fell in the hole in the first place. Because how easy would it have been for him out of shame and out of embarrassment to keep it to himself, but he didn't. He called out for help. What are you struggling with today that you're keeping to yourself? And what if you could overcome any shame and any embarrassment and share your story and your struggles with others? Remember, harnessing the power of and always beats keeping it to yourself. One really is the loneliest number. Thank you.